this is Molly, who I've become friends with, and Molly uh, has a resource guarding problem. She guards her food, she also guards toys, bones, different things along those lines. She's also gotten in some fights with uh, uh, Oakley, uh, the, the, a very exuberant lab. Now, Oakley's not getting enough exercise, and I'm pretty sure that uh, these are two separate issues. She gets mad at Oakley when he's doing just out of control energy, and we've talked off camera about fixing that by more exercise. Uh, but basically, resource guarding is not considered an aggressive behavior. If you, have a if you have a dog that resource guards, you're probably looking at me like I'm crazy. Because the reason we call it, and we say it's not a resource or not an aggressive behavior, because once you remove the resource that they're guarding, the behavior stops instantly. Aggression is much different. So basically, um, I'm going to suggest that the guardians actually don't feed her out of a bowl for about a couple weeks and start hand feeding her. Now, when you uh, have a dog you're hand feeding, there's an expression, don't bite the hand that feeds. Well, if I'm holding my hand here, what I would like to do when I'm feeding her by hand is a small handful here. While she's doing it, I'm going to touch her here. Just touch while she's eating the food out of my hand. Now, if she starts getting stiff or growls or starts quivering her teeth or her lips, then don't. Just feed her. You might have to feed her a couple meals, just a little handful at a time, until she gets used to that. But eventually, you want to get to the point where she's, you're touching her on her flank while she's, getting, while she's eating the food on her hand. You are conditioned that touching me doesn't mean the food is going away, and she's not going to bite you because you're the one providing the food. And then every time that you're, you run out of food, you take your hand away, then grab another scoop and do the same thing. Eventually, you're going to start petting here. Then you're going to gradually start petting and getting closer and closer. Eventually, you'll be petting her under her chin. Now, she's going to start growling. When she starts growling, that means back off a little bit and practice a little bit in the previous spot. But if you do this slowly and methodically, you should eventually be able to touch your dog under its chin, and it's not going to growl at all because you're, proving, you're earning the dog's trust. That's what we're saying. Resource guarding is all about saying, in the wild, it's very natural for dogs. They need to guard their food because that's survival for them. When we're inside in domesticated situations, we don't need to do that, but sometimes they still do it. And it's not indicative of how well-trained your dog is or how well-behaved your dog is. Very well-trained, very well-behaved dogs can develop separate resource guarding. The worst things you can do if you have a dog with resource guards is confront it and be aggressive or continue to forcefully take the thing away because the whole point of the, re the behavior is to say, I don't want you to take my stuff. Well, you're proving to me that you're here to take my stuff, so I'm going to be more of a resource guard. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show the guardian. Uh, now, we just try to do this in the room because she's being fed in a separate room right now. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather feed her in the room. Uh, but basically, I'm going to have the guardian put, uh, put some food in her bowl, and I'm going to show you the technique that I use. Uh, this is out of a book called Mine, M-I-N-E with an exclamation point. It is the definitive guide if you have a dog that guards resources. Now, a dog can guard a person or a place, like this chair that she guards. I can also guard a thing like bones or food. They can, all, they can also guard people. And sometimes they guard all three of them or a combination. All right, so what we want to do is uh, I'm going to have you put in maybe twice as much as what you just did. I'm going to let the, the guardian go ahead and put it in the bowl. Now, I'm just staying here. I'm going to try to prevent the dog from getting to the bowl while it's still far away. The closer the dog gets to something, the more apt they're going to be to guarding it. So she sat down. So did you guys think of a word that you'd like for her to eat via your eating Grub. Grub. Okay. So now I'm going to go invite her over and say grub when she takes her first bite of food. Oh, go ahead. Here. Of course, you're not going to eat right because you only get fed once a day. Let's doctor up your food a little bit. There we go. The guardian's probably looking at me like a crazy because they're on hands there. There we go. So we say grub. So the process for this, can you, can you film me? Oh, Make sorry. sure uh, you see us both. So you might need to take a step back. So what we want to do is teach the dog when a human approaches, they're not going to take your stuff, they're going to make your situation better. So what I want to do is approach from different angles. Molly, oops, trying to throw well. There we go. And then I turn and walk away. And then I walk over here, and I knock her, do something else, then I come from, and I usually come from different angles. Molly, and then I walk away. So what I'm saying is when, I, when a human approaches you when you're eating or you have your resource, they're not going to take your stuff. They're going to make your situation better. Molly. Now, I got really close there, uncomfortable because I can read her body language. You guys should be, get, I would get a bigger bowl so you can throw it from a longer distance. And the whole idea is when you get to a certain point and she starts getting stiff 
or growling or baring your lips, that's her telling you, you're getting close to my breaking point. The whole point of this exercise is to practice with the dog what we call sub-threshold, which means she's not reacting. So if you're walking towards her and you find at 12 feet, that's where she she's starts quivering and getting aggressive, or not getting aggressive, because we don't want the aggression, we want to stop before we get to that point. So at 12 feet, she gets stiff and mm -hmm. freezes. Well, then you start approaching and stopping at 13 feet, throw the thing in her bowl, and again, bigger bowl, it won't bounce out, and then walk away. And you want to do it from this angle, from this angle, from that angle, from this angle. So you're coming from all sorts of different angles and different speeds, but you're stopping before the dog reacts. And as you're doing this, at first it's 13 feet, then 12 feet, 11 feet, and this is not each individual meal. You're basing this based on the dog's behavior. The dog is an indicator. The dog gets to tell us when it feels uncomfortable, when it feels comfortable. And eventually you get to the point where we'll be right next to it. And when you get to the point where you can actually reach in the bowl, I would get a long handled spoon just in case the dog gets confused. And at that point I would start taking some wet dog food, canned dog food, mm -hmm. put dry food in, let the dog eat about half of it, then take that scoop of that long handle and the dog's comfortable with you approaching, plop it in and then walk away. So eventually you should be able to get to the point where you can actually just drop stuff in and the dog is comfortable that we, we do it by hand feeding first then by gradually approaching closer and closer, and we're earning the dog's trust over and over. Every time we do this, the dog trusts us a tiny bit more. You're not gonna take my stuff. You're not gonna take my stuff. Now, one last little tip. This is, uh, for resource, this is not exactly resource guarding, but it's kind of in the same wheelhouse, so I'm gonna cover it. Teaching your dog to drop is really, really important. Most of us, do we have a toy somewhere that you can grab real quick, a low value toy that you'd like? Um, most of us never teach our dogs to drop, and I asked the guardians how they taught the dog to drop, and they would like give it a rope, and then they would kind of pull the rope away gently. You can give her the Smurf the behind Smurf? you. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So basically, what? Oh, well, I have one of these. That's all right. Is, is a Smurf better or this better? It doesn't matter. Money. Yes. Let's see if she'll pick it up. Now, if she had picked it up, what I would do is I would just go over and hold this in front of her mouth. She's going to try to take it with the smirk or whatever it is in her mouth. Wait for her to drop it. When she drops it, pop the treat in her mouth, say drop, and then let her, and then don't pick the item up, and then let her have it. So what you're saying is when a human asks you to drop stuff, if you drop it, they're not interested. They don't take it, and then I get, I get an amazing treat, and then immediately after that, I get my stuff again. So now the dog doesn't have any problem dropping. We want to shape this behavior with what we call a low-value item. So you want to find the lowest toy, the toy that she feels the, less protect, the least protective of them, and then help practice that behavior. Then we can practice with a higher value toy and a higher value toy because she likes to steal remote control. Or she just steals remote control? No, so the other one does. Okay. does. So the idea is we want to keep on doing this until the dog gets to the point where they drop anything out of the mouth because that means that you're going to give them, hook them up with something better, and then they get their stuff back 99% of the time. Now, if you do have to take some, the thing away from the dog, then make sure you trade with something equal or greater value. Hold this, yeah. uh, there we go. Um, I'll talk about this in a sec. But we, uh, we hold, uh, uh, you know, whatever the item is, and then we work our way back up to uh, greater and greater items. So basically what I've done here is this is an area, she guard, resource guards this chair. So what you've seen, I've got the guardians, we put a piece of tinfoil. You saw she started to jump up and she stopped. Most dogs don't like tinfoil. Now this is not the ideal, but it, it works. What I like to actually use are X mats, which are uh, just you can get them on Amazon or Chewy or different places. They're a little piece of plastic. You unfold them with the size of an LP. They have basically little plastic spikes on them. The dog will not want to touch them. And so this way you take the dog's ability to be in the chair away. I'm going to be guarding the resource when I'm in the resource or have possession of it. If I can't have possession of it, then I don't. My inclination of guarding it is going to be much. My threshold is going to be much much lower. So the idea, now the other things we can do is make sure she gets plenty of exercise. If she's resource guarding, I talk to the guardians about keeping an exercise journal. Look at your exercise journal and write down, every time she resource guards, write down the time of that as well. You might not need to notice a correlation where every time it's longer than four hours for Molly to get an exercise, that's when she's have a higher percentage of resource guarding. Molly, sit. The guardian's a little bit frustrated because Molly is not doing the resource guarding. Of course, it's like you take your car to the mechanic. 
but I don't need to see it in order to fix it. We don't want to practice it. So if your if your dog is doing it again, write it in the resource in your exercise journal what the time was and what else a little bit of detail. Write a small a small little paragraph, two or three sentences. So you might find consistently every time it's when these combination of things happen, that's when she's more more inclined to do it. We're looking for trends, and the more data we get through collecting through a resource through an exercise journal, the more educated we are to come up with the right decision. Well, this is my buddy Molly. And she is a resource guarder, but these are steps that you can help, uh, you can use to stop any dog from resource guarding. 